look away. You witness a king's revival. Oh my god, he's hot. We didn't look away. We just witnessed a king's revival. Now it's time to recover and have a chat. With me today, I have Brad, the czar of Zelda. I looked away. <laughs> Those you apps did. were too much for my eyes. You didn't witness <laughs> the king's revival? No, no, I, d I did not. I, I witnessed some abs, though. The return Why? of the king? <laughs> yeah, that, he's, the, he's the king, all right. He he's is the king, king. of push-ups, sit-ups, and chin-ups. <laughs> <laughs> the return of Daddy Dorf. Yeah, the return of Daddy Dorf. And me, I am Hunter, and I am also here. So we just got our uh, official trailer number three for Tears of the Kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's just the self-proclaimed final trailer, actually. I'm sure that we'll technically get a few more things. Actually, one thing yeah. leaked, a TV ad leaked. But um, so I'm sure there'll be Nintendo a launch trailer. Nintendo has a weird way of saying like final because like they also said there was like the final Mario trailer and immediately after there was just nothing but trailers for the for the movie that were completely different. Yeah, the idea of like trailer is different from teaser is different from like other things at TV <laughs> ads and whatever. You just keep showing me stuff and I don't know what you mean when you say trailer. <laughs> as far as like, I guess the, the two to four minute trailer or whatever i don't know because that e3 reveal for zelda was also like three minutes but i mean okay this is the yeah, official sure. final trailer at least sure, before Nintendo. we're almost definitely going to get a launch trailer <laughs> sure <So. laughs> there's, I, there's I think i think there's three and a half i think there's like what three and a half weeks before the game actually launches i'm sure they're gonna pull something else out so we do have the final official trailer self-proclaimed at least pre-release trailer i think that this was this one was really meaty. The gameplay reveal was more mm -hmm. of a showing off the mechanics of the game. And a yeah. lot of people were worried. I've heard a lot of discussion about how this game looks a lot like just kind of DLC for Breath of the Wild. And I think that yeah. they really needed two things to prove us wrong. One, to show that the gameplay is different without like the Sheikah Slate and there's like, you know, the it shows different gameplay elements, like all of the fusing stuff, like the fuse mechanic or and the ultra hand or at and all least, that. Or at least building upon what came before. Yeah, so like some differences and some expansions on the gameplay from before and especially story where oh, like yeah. the, the, was like the second thing that it really this game really needed to prove. And the so gameplay demo focused more on the gameplay side of things, the mechanical side of things. Whereas this last trailer is very, very heavily story focused. And that's actually something that I really like because uh, most of the time when I go and play a Zelda game, I'm, I'm very like story involved in lore back back lore involved. Yeah. So like while the mechanics that they're introducing in the game is, is fun, it looks fun, looks like something that I'll tinker with. Eventually, it's going to come down to the point where I'm going to just be in it for the story. Yeah. And uh, I think this trailer actually did a pretty good job bringing me back in. I'm like, oh, OK, oh, all right, we go. All this right. is a there's, new there's Zelda. New yeah, I was like, oh, OK, this this is a new Zelda. OK, oh, oh, guess who's back? <laughs> oh, we'll get to it. All right. <laughs> yeah. So we just kind of wanted to take a deeper dive kind of analysis style. Go through this thing like we did for all of the other Tears of the Kingdom stuff. Yes. And I do think that this is going to be a juicy one. Everything we know, addendum number two. <laughs> three now. Because we did the... Oh, it's three. Oh, that's <laughs> the gameplay demo. <laughs> I, I actually, on that note, I put together a playlist of our full coverage of the of Tears of the Kingdom. I'll link that yeah. in the description of the video and the show notes and whatever else. Okay, just to perfect. have a full comprehensive breakdown of the several hours of content now that we have covering this yeah. game. Let's go ahead and get to it without any further ado. Oh, I am going to mute this to avoid just in, copyright just, striking. Just, <laughs> just in case. I'm sure the ninjas will still figure out a way in there, but uh -huh. we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We start off in the sky. 
given a really good shot at a lot of the uh this it's, it's a really good shot of sky left up there yeah sky rule as i <laughs> like to call it sky rule like look at all of the there's so many islands man this is there's that really a big one up there explore. too i I, mm-hmm. I swear it looks like the skyloft main island it looks yeah the I'm not... city or town or whatever of skyloft. yeah 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 we see one of those towers new sheikah towers or something. actually another one right here too i thought i thought they were like mining sites yeah Maybe. i think that we see one in this trailer i think it is maybe a sheikah tower thing but it's really we never get a close-up on them i think that we see the inside of one but it, it, again it's the inside so we can't really tell and you can even see way uh, unless those are unless those are like clouds i can really see way off in the distance just how much sky sky rule there is like yeah it goes right really far. right behind death mountain even i think yeah. i see some things yeah like over here yeah, unless they're those all are over clouds. The map. Uh, no, they look really angular. Yeah, so these they they are everywhere. It looks to be just as a uh, just as much extra land up top here as like the amount of extra dungeons that we saw below. Which I fully believe that there's going to be a subterranean section of this uh, of this game too, and it's going to be agree. quite expansive. I agree. I think so. And we see some more of it later in this trailer. By the way, one of the reasons why I think that these are maybe Sheikah Towers also is that Mm -hmm. where the Hateno ancient tech lab is, I forgot to, I neglected to mention this last time, there is one of these towers, it looks Mm. like, which I'll I'll get to maybe, but like, that's just interesting. Like that, that makes me think that maybe whereas the old Sheikah Towers were like old Sheikah tech, like ancient Sheikah tech, maybe these are like new Sheikah tech with like lights and all that. Maybe the Hylians built them and then got overtaken. Something like that. Yeah, who knows? I mean, we're only a few weeks away now, but I, man, I'm so freaking ready for this game. But anyways, yeah. that, that's just, I'll show, talk about that some, a little bit more later. <laughs> we have a shot of... Ah, oh, little battles going on. Independent of, of us. Yeah, so... It seems like there's multiple factions in this game, like mechanically multiple factions of like these choose, which have like the like big Zelda, like Ganon eyes, the Mm. corrupted monsters like this is on Ganon's side and it's fighting one of the constructs, which make which tells me that the constructs and like the Zonai ancient Zonai stuff is not corrupted by Ganon. Mm -hmm. They're just completely separate things. That makes sense. Whereas before we were theorizing, well, maybe they're they were corrupted by Ganon the same way that the uh, Guardians were. True, and I think I don't know who pointed it out, but they didn't look quite the same as the Guardians in terms of their red eyes and yeah. the way that they just kind of looked and behaved. Yeah, not so. quite. Yeah, because they because a lot of the like corrupted Guardians will have like red glowing stuff, whereas the the Guardians that we see before they were corrupted all had like blue glowing stuff. Mm-hmm. And these guys have green glowing stuff. So completely separate from the like blue or red, but definitely not red. Not yeah. Ganon corruption. And they're literally fighting Ganon's monsters. So I like that little I I like that. And I also like in this shot, uh, you see the the little construct. He's kind of just working on the tree. The um, ranger which construct. I actually- Link falling. This is such a beautiful shot, man. It's, it is really cool. And you and you see a lot of stuff just kind of whizzing past, yeah. past you. Like, I'm looking at that structure, and I'm sure we've seen it in the other trailers. We but, have. Uh, I've pointed it out before. Yeah. and But, like, I like the flavor of, like, environment that I'm getting from that, that the other game uh, that Breath of the Wild didn't really offer. Yeah, um, this is kind of like a visual flair in terms of I'm assuming that's like some sort of dungeon, mini dungeon or big dungeon either way. So I I'm looking forward to that, to what they're going to produce. So I think if I had to guess, this is the starting area mm-hmm. of the game is this big dungeon thing, because I have pointed this out in other trailers before. I thought that it was a dungeon, but I think it from the looks of it, like if this is the size of a Tory gate and Link is closer to the camera but like regular size 
Yeah. I think that this is a lot smaller than we were speculating it was before. Uh, you see, it, it, if like Link human size Link is like this tall, then, you know, this isn't quite full dungeon size. So I think mm-hmm. that this is probably maybe the starting area because on the Zelda website, it mentions Link begins his journey on one of the many mysterious floating islands. So okay. I think that the Sky Islands and particularly this collection of Sky Islands is going to be essentially like the Great Plateau of... It looks roughly the size of a Great Plateau. Yeah. Yeah. So I so think that... it's like the Great Plateau like starting tutorial section of Tears of the Kingdom. We see um, one of these, what I'm assuming is teleport points. Mm-hmm. These like shrine replacement deals. And uh, we see one of those like floating blocks right here yeah that we've been seeing in some places and uh one of these like little pools of malice on the surface as well in this actually a few pools of malice there is death mountain uh, uh oh wow you're right above death mountain i was trying to f- see it off in the distance no nah, it's right here here's one of those glowing ground murals a tower this shows a lot yeah, of the I, world. I, I wish I understood what what that's going to be about. <laughs> Another one of these things. Pool of Malice. Something glowing on the ground. Lake Hylia? I am not sure. Another huge one of these things. Pool of Malice. Tower. Tower. I can't wait for this game. I like the... It's a circular structure in the back. Yeah, we pointed this out last time and we get a better look of it later because you mentioned mm. your theory was uh, in a previous trailer. We saw this whole thing and your theory was that it was probably like during that final battle. Oh, the of, yes, that's right. It I like blew that. a hole through like a mountain or something, but we get a better look of it later and some stuff has changed in uh in kakariko village oh okay dang i really really wanted that like a a big explosion in a mountain from from the final battle of breath of the wild yeah some consequences from breath of the wilds like would have been nice we we still might we still might get it that's true the game's not out yet yeah we see this uh this shrine replacement probably a teleport point but deactivated it's not also early Mm. At least that's what I think this looks like that. Uh, we see one of those. If this is Kakariko Village over here, then this would be a, one of those Sheikah, what I'm assuming are like new Sheikah technology towers right next to it, which would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Here is Hateno Village all mushroomed out. <laughs> they must be doing a festival or something. A festival or like there's like a new mushroomy character or something like that. I'm dancing around some leaks that happened, but <laughs> oh, 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 uh, yeah, I, I actually haven't seen any of those. Oh, so I'm completely leakless. Oh, awesome. Cool. <laughs> uh, so this lady's wearing like a little mushroom hat. There's some mushroom, this mushroom tower thing, mushroom, mushroom, mushroom. Hateno village is all mushroom down. Oh, this is, by the way, what I was talking about. This is where the yeah. Hateno tech lab is. Oh, straight up looks like the eye of Sauron. Oh, yeah the tower (laughs) this is i like that they're actually showing off that they're trying to reclaim like like the old hyrule they're setting Mm -hmm. up tents there and uh my brother was saying that he really hopes that there's actually a rebuild mechanic in the game and he feels like there's going to be where link goes around and you actually are play a part in how the new world is going to look and engage with it. Yeah, I did. There's, they're also still in the process of rebuilding during this whole time too. Yeah, I didn't mention it last time, but idea that there's a lot of building slash crafting elements of Tears of the Kingdom, like with the fuse ability, fusing, like creating weapons, crafting weapons from two completely different things, and the idea of like uh, Ultra Hand being able to like craft certain, like create mechanical like like, uh vehicles and stuff like that and we see other uses for the ultra hand ability later in this trailer that aren't necessarily creating vehicles but like other uses that the ultra hand could have the idea of like building 
seems to be a mm-hmm. theme of this game. And may, hopefully maybe rebuilding Hyrule is a part of that. Yeah, it, it would definitely connect with what we left with in Breath of the Wild. Yeah. It seems to be a theme of this game already. So why wouldn't it be a major part of the story? Anyways, just mechanically. We also see that that yeah. big circle thing there. Yeah, this is like um, uh, what's called Castle Town or something like that in. Uh, it's yeah. This is also in Twilight Princess, like this specific it's like the area. main square. Yeah. Where you see usually a bunch of like guardians all over the place in Breath of the Wild. Now they're just kind of gone. Yeah, and people seem more comfortable like setting up tents and stuff with the Hyrule the Royal Crest, although notably without the Triforce. With this little um, head. Did thing anybody here really have? Did Link have the Triforce? So z- it showed the, the Triforce one? on Zelda's hand when she awakened her powers in one of the later memories. Yeah. In Breath of the Wild, like so, it does show the Triforce in Breath of the Wild. I see a lot of people saying that the Triforce was absent. No, it's it's not absent. Not. I know that. I just yeah. don't think it showed up on Link. No, it never did. It showed up on Zelda, if anything. And oh. but it's just interesting. Usually, the Hyrulean Royal, Royal Crest has a Triforce in it, and it does have a Triforce in it inside the castle. But yeah. this like new age, like rebuilding Hyrule, their Hylian Crest does not have the triforce on it i would not be surprised if they if they forgot about it or kind of have a bad taste uh of, of about the triforce because in a way you know a lot of their woes kind of stem from the triforce yeah and ganon's whole quest for the triforce the fact that ganon or demise's reincarnation is one third of the triforce like it chose ganondorf mm-hmm. the, the triforce of power did so it kind of has some evil associated in it by nature, almost, which is very <laughs> fittingly. We've been making a lot of Lord of the Rings references, a fit very Lord of the Rings. The idea of oh, yeah. the ring of power always is negative. It's always evil. We see uh, Boromir fall into the same trap. Yeah. And uh, similarly in uh, Zelda, the idea that like what power represents is evil not necessarily always. It, like, I don't think Link it's the power that's evil. It's just the fact that power is means that those the capability want, of it. like yeah, the capability of of like heart. It just attracts the bad people. Not that it in and of itself is inherently bad. It's yeah, the just, potential of power. Yeah, is and, and yeah, we see like Link wield the Triforce of power, the, rather the full Triforce in some games, and we see Zelda wield the full Triforce in Breath of the Wild, and that's not necessarily evil. But the its capability it has a capability to do much evil. Yeah. So, anyways, that's just interesting that like you what well, you were saying the potential that maybe they forgot about the Triforce because you know the castle itself was inaccessible for a good hundred years during Breath of the Wild, and now it's floating in the sky and it quite even, destroyed. Because there was a few people in Breath of the Wild that were are old enough to remember the calamity. Like there is one girl in Hateno Village, for example, like this old woman that remembered the calamity. She's like 100 plus years old. Wasn't it Impa? No, not just Impa, but in Hateno Village. There was an old lady. Yeah, there was a few people that were are old enough to remember the calamity, including like Pura and and Robbie and stuff. But um, in Hateno Village. Didn't Pura also wasn't Pura also there, but she like made herself young somehow again. Uh, yeah, Pura and Robbie both gave themselves immortality somehow. I, I don't fully get it. Yeah, that sounds like that sounds like uh, you, you'd be breaking some rules there. But go ahead. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Impa is also uh, super old and probably didn't have any of that future tech science magic. But then she also aged less gracefully. So I don't know. <laughs> but um. A fish diet, it, man. It'll help you. <laughs> in any event, the idea that maybe some stuff was forgotten, even like yeah. in Breath of the Wild, there was that one guy in one of the stables that like the lore was so lost that the guy thought that instead of the master sword, there was a master torch and he oh, wielded yeah. the master torch and he was like a training with the master torch. Like that's how forgotten some of the history is because the kingdom collapsed and there's not a whole lot of written records. Yeah, well, all the written records are just straight up destroyed and 
I'm actually surprised that we don't see a lot more wreckages of like the the, the uh, guardians and whatnot. Even in this area, yeah. I guess they could they could have theoretically moved them out, but like I feel like I sh- we should be seeing more wreckages here. I wonder what they did with them. Yeah, we haven't seen too many like ancient Sheikah stuff in the trailers, and maybe the part of that is because they want the players to focus on the new age of Sheikah tech and like the like sci-fi advanced ancient civilization is now supposed to be the Zonai and not the Sheikah. So we're they're trying to divert our attention as designers but like in lore like yeah where did all of the ancient sheikah tech go yeah they they were everywhere and this this definitely wasn't like many years later this is probably like within the last six months like six months later so we see some some aging on some of the characters that from breath of the wild Mm. that i will point out later um, so, yeah, okay. like, like at least some time has passed, like some significant amount of time has passed. So maybe they were just removed or maybe everyone used that uh, that glitch in Breath of the Wild where you can like stasis some of the guardians and then they fall through the earth. Who knows? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the case, uh, I wish they showed that with Link. Like if there was actual time lapse, he just said, looks the same. <laughs> he just yeah. looks the same. <laughs> He's like just like you're going, just pu- like, you're just perpetually five two. <laughs> <laughs> he is surprisingly short for like being an yeah. adult, like what the famed knight or something. Yeah, um, like but he's yeah. Anyways, we've been on stuck on this still for a while. It yeah, it looks like some settled settling has happened in some areas that they were were previously inaccessible, but now humans Hylians have kind of uh, tried to colonize a little bit more there's some kind of effort here going on with these tents maybe it's like a battle tent because they're right in front of the castle which just flew up into the sky so maybe they're more like like military kind of hateno village is like kind of preparing or like guarding the perimeter we I, see this wall here but maybe I they're guess, trying to colonize i i feel not because you can see like they're they're building stuff you see like the tents yeah, on the left like they're, they're definitely right building here. stuff yeah, but like that's so little. Like, if that's mm. gonna be the battalion of knights, I'm like, okay, you might as well not be there. Yeah, maybe these are more like building supplies or something. Yeah, I, I definitely don't... think this is just town building. And we'll just continue. We see Link walking through it, and then here is our Hateno village, uh, Kakariko village. Looks like they've expanded very vertically. So, yeah, like these are like the um. In uh, in China, there's the uh, Guilin. In uh, Guilin, China, I actually I've been to China. My half of my family is like Chinese. I, my family is weird and complex. And I I've been to Guilin, uh, this little river village like Guilin proper. And a lot of the, the mountains do look exactly like this. Mm-hmm. I know in Planet Namek in Dragon Ball Z is actually based on Guilin as well. These yeah. kind of mountains, and so is. Um, the Gwaili region of Genshin Impact. Obviously, Gwaili, Gwailin. Yeah. So, <laughs> has very similar looking mountains. And uh, Kakariko Village is loosely also, despite being specific period of Japanese culture, is the mountain ranges at least are based on Gwailin. It is already very vertical. But yeah, we see some like platforms More and stuff structures. that they've been building. Mm-hmm. And there's that circle thing that you were just talking about. That Yeah. It definitely wasn't there before, and I'm actually. It looks like it's probably like a piece of the sky, of one of those sky mountains. That's what like I'm the thinking first thing too. That we saw. But it doesn't look like it did nearly enough damage to that mountain. No, it looks like it fell, like it wedged itself right in between two of these Guelan yeah. mountains, and we do we do see some other debris kind of around that oh, has we do. fallen, yeah, right. and including remember in Kakariko Village those kind of story lore building of Kakariko Village there was one Sheikah guy who like left his wife because uh-huh. uh, he was like obsessed with his cuckoos yeah he that his house has been destroyed <laughs> <laughs> one of these things fell on his house poor guy <laughs> okay catch a break I can totally imagine some like cuckoos are around you have to like collect his cuckoos just like in oh, the first it's... game it's like an no. It would also be like an ocarina, where it's like it's around the village. Put them in. Yeah. The pen. Also in Kakariko <laughs> Village. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. 
<laughs> so I, I, I hopefully there's some story where he gets back together with his wife because she no. clearly still what's loves gonna, him. What's going to happen is you're going to have to rebuild his house. And collect his cuckoos. Or maybe his cuckoos are gone forever. Who knows? <laughs> it's a sad story away. either way. He yeah. had to force, force the, to give them away because they ran away and now he has, gets back with his wife. Maybe. We're just speculating at this point. But yeah, his house was destroyed by some fallen debris. It's, it was the cuckoo <laughs> guy. <laughs> it reminds me of the My Cabbages from Avatar. <laughs> My cuckoos! <laughs> My cuckoos! <laughs> Oh man, uh, I I'm not entirely sure. This looks like one of those um, those altar like lakes of power or whatever. You mean the shrines, like that Zelda saw? Yeah, those like three the like went wisdom, power, and courage. I, this looks like one of those. I'm not a hundred percent sure where this it looks is. like a bridge that like it's it's like you're transitioning from the jungle area and then going into like the gerudo valley or something yeah i'm not a hundred percent sure where this is but link's running away from it yeah oh there's that the giant sky tornado that's definitely a dungeon yeah we see more of this later we see potentially some molduga or something in the gerudo desert this is one of mm -hmm. those teleport points some kind of structure appearing from the ground. So maybe this is that's more like this is appearing from the ground. Yeah. Some debris falling. So, some people mentioned that this looks like a shot of Hyrule Castle rising, but I think it's just the camera panning down, actually. But anyway, we'll but uh, um, yeah. I mean, I guess it is kind of hard to notice. I don't know. Some debris is falling, though, either way. But yeah, either way, we see some some Sheikah and some Hylians here mm -hmm. watching probably this happening for the first time. What we later learn, actually, what this event is called. It's called the upheaval. And mm -hmm. that was kind of tucked away in uh, I forget if it was on the website or if it was on the Zelda newsletter like email newsletter but this event the event of this game essentially their version of the calamity like tears of the kingdom's version of the calamity is called the upheaval mm -hmm. which kind of is fitting because like hyrule castle like it was upheaved it was it has been risen into the sky yeah and evil is rising once again so we see some people witnessing the upheaval probably while they're rebuilding some of hyrule we see one of these platforms again with a little sign in front of it, like we mentioned last time. Yeah. These people cannot catch a break. <laughs> no. Like, Hyrule for tens of thousands of years, actually. Well, yeah. <laughs> demise is cursed, man. Yeah. I mean, speaking of demise, uh, straight up, like, yeah, come on. Give me a give me a give me a break. You kidding me? That's demise. So I, it yeah. looks like um it's like the way the the way his hair moves in the same way that the tentacle like from like Skyward Sword, the way his mm -hmm. malice or whatever moved, just how hulking of a figure you can see in his tricep alone. Yeah. It, it, look at that arm. Look at that. Come on. So it, what I'm thinking, because Demise, Demise has like kind of his curse says that an incarnation of him will follow incarnations of Link and Zelda for all time. Yeah. And that that's Demise's curse at the end of Skyward Sword. Mm -hmm. A part of so Demise is not just Demise anymore. Demise is all of his reincarnations. Demise is Ganon. He is Ganondorf. He is all of the other main bad Beasts. guys that wield. Yeah, that there's the one in Four Swords that has a different name. Also, they're all Demise. They're the incarnation of demise that seeks the triforce of power and ganondorf is just one of them and ganondorf in particular i think because he looks a lot like demise almost in my head i think of it as his like chosen champion in a way yeah i think demise and ganondorf have a lot of similarities so this shot here could be ganondorf embracing the demise within him 
like yeah. embracing demise's roots his own roots if that makes yeah. sense we see Ugh. we don't see his face in particular but like man this hair looks That's... a lot like demise this arm deal looks like a lot like demise he has like horns coming out of him almost ganon like like at the end of ocarina of time yeah this is of like a almost a perfect combination of ganon slash ganondorf in ocarina of time and demise from skyward sword so i'll give it i'll give a shout out and i think i shouted this i I think i talked to you about him there's a good kind of like not necessarily character explanation exploration but more like a what if um animation that somebody does on youtube his name's major links you've sent me some things stuff of his yeah yeah it's actually i actually really like the interpretation of of ganondorf with that uh in in his interpretation or in his animations where it's essentially like Gandorf wants to do his own thing because his original goal was to free the Gerudos, but because he sought power, he is essentially was able to uh, demise was able to wiggle into his heart to like manipulate him. And like, it's not saying that Ganondorf necessarily is a good guy. He's more, he's still an ambitious self-driven guy, but he's not like supposed to be the king of demons sort of thing. You see I think of it more in the sense that Link is a reincarnation of previous Links Mm -hmm. to where he is basically the same character over and over. I think that Demise and all of his reincarnations, like Ganon, Ganondorf, Demise, same thing, different names. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this frame in particular, he almost still looks more mummified, but we see a horn coming out of his head when he turns, which reminds me of... um, Ocarina of Time, where Ganondorf Beast becomes Ganon. Ganon. Yeah. And, and those shots see... are always really fun. Mm-hmm. We see these shots again. She It starts to glow right there, and I'm imagining that's the tear that she has throughout the trailer. So, Like she picked it up or something. Yeah, her hand in particular starts glowing. We'll talk more about the tears later, but I think that this is probably someone teleporting her because we see the same yellow glow later. Oh, okay. Like teleporting. I think that someone pointed out also that this same thing happens in Breath of the Wild. This color happens when people are being teleported. So except it's in yellow this time. So I think that this is probably instead of Link being able to save her by reaching out his like messed up arm yeah he was like just barely like missed her uh very like amazing spider-man too and then she falls and starts glowing and then is maybe teleported because she survives this probably we see later in this trailer most definitely probably i don't think i don't think nintendo has the guts to kill her off no not zelda no yeah no they don't have the guts (laughs) But yeah, to your point, we see her her hand glowing and it happens to glow in the exact same color as the recall ability, which is the ability Mm. to stop time and send stuff back through time. And Mm. her tear happens to have the same symbol as the recall ability. Oh, yeah, I see it. So this could be something maybe teleport wise, but maybe also time wise of her teleporting away from this danger through time. I'll touch more on some theory crafting later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I mean, like watching through the trailer, I could see there a bend where so where you can throw in time travel. But yeah, we'll we'll talk about that later. Time travel has played a part in every 3D Zelda game up until Breath of the Wild, actually, where the only time travel element was were the memories. Did but every Twilight 3D... Princess do a time travel one? Yes. Why am I forgetting? I know that like the old Princess. Link was there, but I don't know if that's like a time travel thing. True. I'm forgetting what exactly Twilight Princess's deal was. But Twilight like in... Princess was they opened up the realm of Twilight and it's just a completely different realm. And Majora's Mask, for that matter. But then Majora's Mask was the well, Majora's of Mask Arena of Time. time no. So, but yeah, that has time travel because you have to repeat the three days over and over and over again. That's definitely yeah. time travel. But like Wind Waker did, uh, Skyward Sword did. There was Wind a lot Waker of Wind Waker did in a in a way, didn't it? You like go back to the past 
to see the old Hyrule Kingdom. Yeah, was that was that was that what it happened? was more like frozen in time, but then caught it. There was some like weird shenanigans happening with that game. Twilight Princess also had sh- some shenanigans. There was like t- time travel for every Zelda game except for Majora's Mask, which is the follow up. And well, kind of its own little side. I would, in and of itself. I, I would still and say that it has time travels. They use the song of time. Every Zelda game has had time travel except for Breath of the Wild. And this is the direct follow up to Breath of the Wild. I guess future time travel. If you want to call being knocked unconscious for 100 years time travel. Yeah. And like the memories for that matter. So. Uh, we see so, some. This is cool. Um, I. This is what makes me think there's going to be a big underground section. I think that you're going to fall through that through these uh through these like little vents and it's gonna be a puzzle in and of itself or something where like you have to fall into specific ones maybe fight some baddies or something if you choose the wrong one but i think this is gonna be like one of the many gateways to like the underground subterranean high rule so there's gonna be sky rule uh mid rule and low rule i'll just cause <laughs> <it. laughs> i know i threw i had to throw that in but um, I really do think that there's going to be a big subterranean aspect to this game. So a lot of people have been pointing out that these pools of malice that we've been seeing all over the map throughout these mm-hmm. trailers could be links to the underground. But I like the idea that, I don't know, like these could be Mulduga things. These could be portals to the underground. There's so many possibilities. We know so little. They got to do something more with Gerudo Desert because it's pretty they're... empty. Yeah, I was going to say it, it was empty before and there's no way and th- there's going to be really hard ways to like make it seem like you tinkered with Gerudo Desert. And I think making an underground section where you're underneath the desert would make sense if you want to expand that area of the map. Having some unique areas like this could have may- maybe with some story implications could add a lot more exploration to the Garuda Desert because it was kind of the one area of the map that didn't have a whole lot of there was no reason to explore all of it. Yeah, unless you really liked fighting Moldugas. Yeah, one of the like three or four Moldugas. We do see also, I think this is one of those teleport points and we see a little door. It looks kind of different from the teleport points. Like it doesn't have that flat surface that we see on them. Looks, but looks a lot more pointed. Yeah. And we see a little door, kind of, a little glowing door. We also see one of those glowing murals. And then we see what's probably an underground section, or maybe this could be underground could be, or Death Mountain, it, but like it, it could be under Death Mountain from lava or something like that. This looks like a dungeon. And this, the the uh, anti fire suit is making a return. Yeah, it looks like. That's what makes me think that it's Death Mountain because we have that like burning, anti-burning suit. But with the Tears of the Kingdom signature like vials on his hip. This This is this is cool, but it also again, Hunter, Mm -hmm. it gives me strong Skyloft vibes. You see, I was thinking because of because of that enemy, um, I forget which part, but there's like a part in the desert, I think, where it's somewhere in time or something. You have to activate all these weird time stones and you're fighting on oh, top yeah. of a ship. Although it's like six armed Skyward captain, Sword. whatever. Yeah, I, it, this is just where my head takes me when I see that. So people have pointed out that these uh, tapestry or sails or whatever. Mm hmm are the same as some designs that the Rito have. Mm -hmm. And also like this sail here and this head looks very Rito. This looks like a bird head. Yeah. And like these, the oars kind of look like feathers. You know, this is very Rito, but it could be like ancient Rito because this is the Sky Island Sky Rule. This is that big tornado that we've been seeing. So this could yeah. be like ancient Rito. And then later we see the Rito champion hanging out with Link in this Tempest. So this makes me think like, OK, ancient Rito. And then we possibly see an ancient Rito later in this trailer. Oh, so, I think I know the image you're talking about. Yeah, like in the background of an image. So. This. It's <laughs> it, it reminds me of Super Mario Galaxy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. This makes me think that the possibility of the Sky Islands being kind of like the replacement of shrines 
with them being like self-contained little puzzles where you have to like yeah. time things just right and you know basically shrines but also as a secondary point a lot of people thought that breath of the wild was missing a swimming feature because there and it are was it was but that it was planned with one and in one of the tech labs there is what looks like a swimming or like underwater based um like the model of a divine beast yeah hanging from one of the tech labs i think from pura's tech lab the hateno one where it was literally just hanging from the ceiling and it looks like that was a divine beast that probably should have been underwater and there's a lot of stuff like geometry underwater that they didn't need to model out they didn't need to like geometry like out unless there was the option to swim underwater there was even chests and stuff that are inaccessible unless you're able to swim yeah and there's a lot of zelda games where you swim underwater yeah so like the idea that breath of the wild was planned to have a swimming mechanic but was cut later makes a lot of sense once you realize like once you start debugging through the game and exploring what it looks like under there and we see maybe probably a Breath of the Wild cut feature, him literally swimming through this little orb of water. Like this animation is probably reused elsewhere throughout the game, like underwater. Oh, God, if they make a water temple. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. Oh, no. All over again. Where's my iron boots? Oh, slowly trudging through. <laughs> but yeah, like like presumably he jumped into this thing he has to have the ability to jump out of this thing which means that they made a swimming mechanic specifically for this island yeah like no they probably are reusing that swimming mechanic throughout the other places across hyrule that have water and already designed geometry for swimming through Mm -hmm. so makes a lot of sense uh this is awesome uh, yeah, this is pretty cool. This has to be a story sequence. And also, his outfit. <laughs> this, like, sky... The, the flying squirrel. Oh, man, the flying squirrel. So, this could be, like, a replacement, kind of, for... Um, well, we see, like, different uh, paragliders. Because we yeah. pointed out in a previous episode that they have different Zelda amiibo specific paragliders and there has to be something you purchase or obtain throughout the game or something mm-hmm. that like like equipable items and the idea that maybe something like an outfit basically has the same effect as a paraglider is kind of cool and you can kind or, of yeah. aim while you're skyward sword diving down yeah this could be something to per it might not even it may be an outfit it might not be an outfit either it could just be like you bought this at a store and it's in lieu of a paraglider, you get a parasuit or something or yeah. like, like a, like something like a backpack essentially on you that just activates when you need it. Kind of like Batman. Some Zelda tuber, I think it was Nintendo black crisis, but I forget um, pointed out that the rim of this is very similar to the hole that we see in the, Cruda Desert for the uh, uh, the Yiga clan, the Yiga clan. Yeah. Oh, so this could be like a Yiga, uh, the Yiga clan's back. Yeah. Or like this is what was inside that hole or something like that. And there's just like lasers and stuff like that through it, which was either placed there by the Yiga recently or was placed there like hundreds or thousands of years ago. I choose to believe that the Yiga clan was able to do this. Hmm. I liked the Yiga clan, generally speaking, in Breath of the Wild. I want I want to see them make a good a good return. That's yeah. like a side vote. Don't make them the main thing, but make them like a kind of like they were in Breath of the Wild. Maybe a little bit more prominence, but yeah. But so this is super cool. It's such a cool idea that you're like dodging these lasers, Mission Impossible mm-hmm. style. This. It's- Oh, it's like a crank machine. I just noticed it. It's like a gumball machine. Yeah, it's like one of those like pachinko machines, like or like gumball <laughs> I, machines. I didn't notice that before. Also, I just saw him turning a cog or yeah. like a, a thing. And we're inside one of those big old spheres. 
this big yeah. old hole and he's like turning it or something it looks like i don't know i think you you see that uh, uh later on in the trailer he we glides do. over i think this very yeah. one or another one like it yeah there's probably a few of them but this might be the exact same one and this there's some kind of puzzle like shrine like puzzle inside of this thing i wouldn't even be surprised that throughout the game as you progress through the story more stuff appears in the sky so like what you see isn't exactly everything that you get yeah but like they progressively like progressively islands or sky islands start showing up as you progress through the main story that would be kind of cool a lot of people didn't like that breath of the wild was a little too open i I know i like i love that but you could I just thought go it was straight great. To... Mm-hmm. I thought it was great for gameplay. I, I I do think it 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 hurt the story though. Exactly. So the fact that you could just finish the story in like a handful of hours, like some people have been doing it in a handful of minutes. Well, like, you know, you could like finish the Great Plateau and then go straight to Ganon and kill him with a broom. And yeah. the end story done. So it is kind of if they lock some of the story behind you needing to do certain sections of the open world part in order to get to the end and in order to unlock some of the sky islands or whatever else, I think that that would be super cool. I would like that because even the way that Breath of the Wild handled the story was essentially memor- remembering things that happened in the past. I don't think a lot of games do that very well. And I think generally it's not a good way of storytelling just because you're not an active participant in the story. Yeah. So it's, it just doesn't feel as good. So I like I would really like to see that in this game where Link and Zelda and friends are active participants in what's going to happen. Yeah. Just so that I can engage with them so that, you know, my first story experience, at least in Breath of the Wild, isn't like uh, Daruk dying. Yeah. <laughs> before I even know who he is, because then I have no emotional weight to that. I think that Breath of the Wild handled it OK, but it wasn't. Like, all the cool stuff happened in the past. Like, the story of the game is different from the lore of the game, if that makes sense. The story of what happens during the events, like the year of Breath of the Wild, isn't the same as the story that happened 100 years beforehand. The story that you're playing through is basically non-existent. You're calming down the um, Divine Beasts so that way each respective nation can survive a little bit so that way it stops raining all the time in Zora's domain so that way Vana Burris isn't causing a sandstorm you know but that's basically the only story that happens and you can yeah, Ganon. You're, you're just picking up the pieces of what happened before when what happened yeah. before was far more interesting that was than all the cool stuff the pieces yeah that's why like Age of Calamity was super interesting like that that was the that story was- yeah, because then I actually felt for the characters because you were like playing with them and yeah. you were like engaging with them. And I'm like, I like these characters. So I, yeah. that's what I want this game to do. Like, give me a cast of characters that I like and yeah. want to see succeed. I know they tried doing that because there's like the descendant people in Breath of the Wild. But they didn't but, do like, anything. They really didn't do anything. And it was also like split down the middle with what came before and the new people now. So it's like, eh, I don't we didn't really spend too much time with anyone so that like, I don't have strong feelings towards anyone because of that. Yeah. But in any event, he's pushing this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's pushing the pachinko machine. This looks like the... This is a really cool section. It's, yeah. It's th- fun. This looks like the um, the labyrinths in Breath of the Wild. Yeah. This looks like specifically one of the edges with uh, these, like, I specifically remember this exact same texture on the walls of the labyrinth, like the and walls of the labyrinth with these like fake pillar looking things that like are is super just a flat texture but it's supposed to look like it you can climb up these and mm-hmm. the rest of the walls of the labyrinth looking here's like one of those zone ice worlds and here's one of those tiers uh, within I, that swirl yeah yeah i see it yeah the the tier looks very similar to like a kokiri the, like the kokiri stone mm-hmm. yeah i think they're based on magatamas like Japanese mm. magatamas, which I'll I can get to later. I have uh, I have a whole theory planned for the uh, the magatamas. But yeah, like this, uh, I think that we are thinking that a lot of the labyrinths were lifted in, into the skies because the three cubes that we see throughout all the trailers, those like cube shapes that are floating in the sky, happen yep. to be hovering over exactly where the labyrinths were. But to your point, maybe they were raised at some point through in the story. 
they're like raised into the sky and then this is link going through one of them but this this freaking part so there's some kind of war happening right outside of hateno village this is like oh the, yeah they're actually participating the graveyard yeah this is like where the the link the memory happens in breath yeah. of the wild where link dies so yeah this is like people like hylians this guy's wearing like a fedora <laughs> super not <laughs> prepared for battle <laughs> or fighting just, um, just randomly generated npcs <laughs> yeah at least that guy has a bucket <laughs> yeah yeah that's true <laughs> and like a pot lid these guys are not prepared for battle but they're like yeah fighting to like uh probably prevent the uh the breach of this hateno village wall um mm-hmm. and link is trying to help out this is a new weapon yeah it's a pretty cool looking new weapon it has like the ganondorf colors to it it looks very zonai is what i was thinking this looks like maybe a zonai spear or something like that either way probably some story sections i really want some story sections to be impacts on the world on the open world yeah. hateno village like this whole story like main quest mission of rallying the people of hateno village together to fight back a wave of enemies is super cool like building a military from scratch i guess a bunch of farmers in this case yeah like instead of knights and stuff like common militia these are just common militia here like Mm -hmm. this is this is not like a a formal army this is just militia yeah and i i I don't think we i don't think we see a knight or a formal ish army at all no link is the only knight and he's like a hundred years old yeah (laughs) yeah it's just cool i really want these to be like because if you're exploring this area in tears of the kingdom this isn't just going to be happening in the overworld this has to be a story segment hopefully or 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 better yet just some side quests like a like a like a more impactful side quest that actually does yeah. stuff to the world like all the main quests were in breath of the wild basically just impactful side quests yeah <laughs> except for the kill ganon quest uh, yeah i mean i i really want them to give me that sort of like like majora's mass treatment to their side quests where i'm actually yeah. engaged with the people that i'm interacting with to make everything feel a bit more cohesive and sewn together. Yeah. Yeah. This shot, I think, is inside of one of those towers. Because Which, we... Oh, okay, yeah. We literally see, like, this text translates to tower. And it looks very much like the, all the other architecture that we had in the last game. So, it, yeah. It looks ancient Sheikah, not Zonai as, as much. Yeah, like ancient slash maybe some new Sheikah. This text translates to transport, by the way. And then this Mm. text translates to tower repeating over and over, which makes me think that this is one of those towers that we see the lights glowing. Two other things about this. One, this little spool that's attached to him, we have seen, but in this trailer, this arm carrying this spool, which looks very like either Pura or Robbie threw together some like ancient Sheikah tech stuff with some modern Sheikah tech stuff, just -hmm. like there are tech labs. So this spool here, this is probably one of those towers. Yeah, that's probably the Yeah, you're right. That's definitely like the top of a tower. Yeah, because you see you see the thing that he's standing on. That's definitely all the way up. That says transport. It looks like they just made it. Yeah, like you're not going any further up than that. This must be the top. And the same exact spool here, this like wire that this arm, Dr. Octopus style arm is holding. <laughs> Doc Ock. Is literally on his like waist right here. Also, yeah. we see the Sheikah slate, which is or interesting. So because so far, similar to it. Yeah. So, so far, we've only seen Zelda holding the like new styled Sheikah slate. But this Chica slate looks a lot more like the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Literally with a cord coming out of it and everything on the bottom, just like the Nintendo yeah. Switch has. And the Joy-Cons and everything. Like this looks like the Nintendo Switch. That's which makes sense because the previous game, uh the previous Chica slate was based on the Wii U gamepad. Yeah. So, and it's a lot now smaller. Now we're upgrading. Now, now we're upgrading to the Nintendo Switch. That's just interesting stuff. So far we've only seen Zelda holding the Chica slate in some artwork and in one of the trailers but here we see link holding it 
So that's our first time confirmation that the Sheikah Slate is back. Because the Sheikah Slate has been basically replaced by his hand and his hand abilities, like the Ultra Hand and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, it, it'll probably, if, if it's something that's on his being and not just something that relegated to like these sections or maybe Pura's using it or something, um, it's probably just going to be for menu, menu seeking. I think all the magic's still going to be, I call it magic, but yeah, it's magic. All the magic's still going to be in his hand. Yeah, the like Sheikah or Zonai or something magic. Yeah, I think that that's going to be the replacement for the Sheikah Slate runes. But clearly the Sheikah Slate or a replacement of the Sheikah Slate or a different version of the Sheikah Slate or Pura or Robbie's recreation or something is back in Link's hand right here. To continue on, so Link goes up this, we see this. This so is at first... It looked like a Lizalfo at first. I'm sure there's I'm sure there's gonna be some theories as to what this person's gonna be. I think I think that's a mask. It, you think it's a I mask? Don't, I don't it could be a mask, but it also has the horns, kind of like the N Ganondorf has. Ugh, what is it? We see some um some other dark skinned people throughout this trailer. And I think that these could be with all of these like really old looking jewelry and stuff like that. This could be a Zonai. Oh, yeah. This is what the Zonai race looked like. She has a third eye. She does have a third eye. And for those people that have leaked the art book and stuff, we already know this character's name. Oh, we know quite well, a don't bit. tell me. <laughs> <laughs> and I alluded to this earlier, but we see a um, a Rito. This is like a Rito like foot right here. A Rito claw. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And like I the the same shape as like of like the leg and everything. Some people think that this could be like a one of the tiers, one of the, the like tiers I mean, of like could, the Zonai or something. I don't know. It could also be like chains, like a like oh. it's chained up the foot, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Good point. We also see like literally this is the, the Rito bow. I forget what those are what it's called specifically in Breath of the Wild, but this is like the bow. So this is like okay, some yeah, kind of Rito right here on this figure's left or their right rather flip. And then uh, it looks like maybe another character right here. It's kind of hard to tell, but then I think that's a sword. Uh, like a sword. sword. Some kind of it looks like it looks like a sword that's like covered in leaves or something. OK, whatever this is, this could be what I'm thinking is something that happened in the past. This is like mm-hmm. a flashback or something along those lines. Um, with... there, there is malice in the air. There is malice in the air. Yeah. We see this figure, actually. We Or rather, we have seen this figure officially, I think, right here. In this tapestry it, or card. Yeah, I can or see it. I'm seeing like the third eye as well. The third eye, the ears surrounded by the tears of the kingdom, probably the Magatama and similar like necklace and all of that, like in the little carvings underneath the eye. This looks similar to how this person has like little things yeah. underneath their eye. You know, I was thinking the tears of the kingdom. I was thinking I was always thinking Hyrule Kingdom, but it could have just been the, just the old kingdom, the kingdom that came before. Yeah, this so it could be the tears of like the Zonai kingdom. Yeah. Another possibility is that we see this character later on in the trailer. But mm-hmm. at, anyways, but that could be also a different character. We don't know. We yeah, see if two... it's a race, it, it could because that those ears aren't as long as the one on the engraving. It might not be the necessarily the same exact they being look pretty long. It's like larger than their head. And also we have these hanging bits coming off of it, just like how this also has some hanging bits coming off of this, their ears. And yeah. again, with like the tattoos or something underneath their eyes and the other person's eyes. And I think that this is the same character person. OK, but it's hard to tell. We see other dark skinned characters that are probably Zonai later Two, possibly three. But that third person might be the same as this character. So I don't know. Anyways. That's cool. Link. Pretty shot. This I've freaking love this idea of like these golems forming it's the golem from pokemon oh interesting (laughs) (laughs) do you know what was the name golurk it's golurk coming out the wall 
Also, it's interesting from what we've seen of the Ultra Hand ability so far, when Link uses the Ultra Hand, the world goes black and white, and then whatever is being reversed is in color. And this is the same deal here. Everything has been black and white, but then this wall is in color. So maybe this could, it's not, not the Ultra Hand, their recall ability. I think I said Ultra Hand earlier. Yeah. Their recall ability. When he uses the recall ability, it's almost like freeze time, the world goes black and white, and then time reverses for the thing that it's aimed at. That could be what this is. Maybe Link's not the only one with those abilities because he he is borrowing those abilities more or less, right, from the hand. Yeah. Yeah. So there there could be instances of boss fights where they too also have those abilities. And I think we even see that see some of that in terms of like the fusing items, right? Yeah. With the constructs. Yeah, the constructs have some fuse items. So I wouldn't be surprised if other bosses or mini bosses have the other abilities that Link has and you have to just deal with it. These Zonai abilities, yeah. But I love this idea of like this humanoid golem forming. That's super cool. It is fun to look at. I like it. It's almost like Legos. Yeah. I was going to say, quite clearly, like, hearkening either to a past, a memory. He's wearing his original garbs and outfits, too. Kind of, but he has this Zonai shield. So this is Tears of the Kingdom's version of Link in the past or something. Because in Breath of the Wild, the throne room looked like this. Yeah, it was quite dead. And it was quite gross. Yeah. And during Breath of the Wild, like at the end of Breath of the Wild, the floor breaks <laughs> <laughs> and the the throne room does not look like this anymore and is destroyed. So this where the throne room is still pristine and like the statue is still intact. And this is clearly mm-hmm. something that happened in the past. It's invoking the past, whether or not he's physically going to the past or this is like a memory being summoned up of what was the past because everything's all like glittery and stuff. So I it, like, yeah, maybe it was that glittery in the past or or this was or somebody's doing something here. So it's kind of like the Zonai yellow. Technology. It's kind of like the yellow glitters and sparkles of the recall ability, which is time travel. Basically, in Breath of the Wild, all of the memories were link recalling stuff like the link in those memories is the link from the past like he's literally just recalling a actual memory Mm -hmm. but this is link with his current like tears of the kingdom shield his zonai shield so maybe instead of watching videos maybe they're somewhat the memories in this game are somewhat playable because yeah this is current link with his current gear in a past version of the world now going back to breath of the wild that's what they should have done they should have made those memories playable sequences maybe even invoke some of like the older like zelda puzzle aspects then i i honestly think the story would have would have hit hit smacked a little harder so if they're doing that here where like you can actually go back and like kind of link walking through what happened in the past or something that that would be kind of cool. I I would appreciate that sort of storytelling. Yeah, it kind of it does what Breath of the Wild did, which I still thought was OK, but not the best, but better. Because, again, this is the past version of the throne room, but with modern day Link in it. So what else could that mean? It's if it was just him recalling a memory like he did in Breath well, of the Wild, then it wouldn't be modern day Link. It would be Link from well, when I was years ago, when I was mentioning like this could be a memory, I don't necessarily mean it in like a oh Link is recalling it. What I'm saying is there could be another being like invoking what was yeah. and showing Link. Yeah, showing Link needing to go back and play through some of the stuff that happened in the past. Which this game was born out of DLC ideas for Breath of the Wild, and Definitely. that literally happens in Breath of the Wild. You go through basically the memories of each of the champions deaths them fighting their uh blight ganons Mm -hmm. and you fight with their gear as if you were the champions fighting their respective blight ganons it is very similar like you go into the past and play through something that happened in the past so that kind of is the same thing as a memory where it's like someone's memory that was being shown to link and link playing through it to your point 
that could be a similar thing where Link is playing through a memory or something that happened in the past. It's like this could be an expanded version of what happened in the DLC because yep. this game was born out of ideas that were cut from the DLC. Mm-hmm. So just an interesting potential there. There's some dialogue that's happening right here. What someone's saying. I think during this scene, there is another man talking to Zelda about something. Yeah, it doesn't same. sound like Ganondorf. No, it sounds like a like another entity. Yeah, like a more comforting kind of probably a good guy. And Maybe you could put the CC on there so we could see it. No, nah, Nintendo or the it unavailable. Uh, what? I know. The heck? What the, what the hell? <laughs> okay, I, I I guess the deaf don't get to enjoy your game, Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that you're, yeah, so this is, he's saying something along the lines of um, the Hyrule's last stand is Link, your, your mm-hmm. chosen knight, and the sword of his. That's kind of mm-hmm. what that figure is saying right here, and that sword of his. And it's, so one of two things, either... Like, because we saw that Master Sword was broken again. Yeah. For this game. So either he brings it back here to do a little little recovery recovery, right? Kind of like Zelda or, in Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Or uh, you do so, maybe you do some like, and I hate this idea, but you do some time shenanigans and like Link goes back to the past to like, basically pick himself up a new master sword (laughs) (laughs) kind of like how um in avengers affinity war like thor goes back and gets his hammer (laughs) yeah and then just puts it back when he's done with it (laughs) i i don't want i hope that's not the case but i could see that maybe happening something i thought of when they were showcasing the recall ability in the gameplay demo is what if Link recalled the Master Sword? Like from time? Yeah, it's like, like because recall, the recall ability is basically taking an object and then putting it in the state that it was in a few moments ago. What if you could use the recall ability on the Master Sword to put it back in its state that it was a few moments ago or days ago or whatever to where it was? it's fully formed again? That would break the mechanic of like, like, at least in lore anyway, maybe not in gameplay, but in lore as to why weapons break when you can just bring them back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The recall ability <laughs> breaks a few things in that regard. <laughs> um, but either way, we see this is um, the Korok Forest, which we noted in a previous episode that the Korok Forest no longer has the Great Deku Tree, but maybe and doesn't have that like veil around it. But maybe this is before that happens because the Master Sword is still in one piece. And I quite clearly see the roots of the Deku tree. Yeah, like some kind of large tree here. That's probably the Deku tree. We also see like some Koroks and stuff that are still chilling out here. Yeah. So, yeah. But anyways, this is probably like a cutscene from before the gameplay, like events of Tears of the Kingdom, if I had to guess. Like how Zelda fetches the master sword in breath of the wild from the core yeah. forest and then puts it back again and then link goes ahead and fetches it maybe he drops it back off at the end of breath of the wild and so then, yeah so he has to go pick it back up again because he's just like oh 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 i'm not done with my dirty laundry yeah before <laughs> their excursion underground happens he needs to fetch the master sword again so that's probably what this is it's like a long intro scene that yeah they they're probably gonna have a lot more set up in the intro scenes because hope so this game has a lot more story than breath of the wild i really hope so (laughs) and then this figure this figure looks shady as all hell Mm -hmm. like even the face on there like yeah it could be zonai but i it could also look like it has tusks instead of the tears i don't know so i think it just this is just a deck like this is a necklace and that the body the head is like off screen no i no, i i know that i'm just, oh, okay. i know it's like an emblem <laughs> i don't think it's a face <laughs> okay okay <laughs> i'll just it's just because it it makes me feel like it's being like deceitful pretending to be zonai when it could be like a ganon follower i don't know mm-hmm. it i just don't trust the figure it's interesting so far this hand looks similar to link's hand with like the long nails and all that mm-hmm so this could be the guy that sacrifices his hand so that Link can use it or 
something along those lines. Unsure. Like if it's like time travel again, it's like this is the past and this is going to be the dude mm-hmm. that like holds. Ugh, I don't want to talk in terms of time travel. You're really hating on time travel. <laughs> it's I, just I'm surprised so, it's, by it's that. Done, it's done so much and it, well, it yeah. like makes it makes me like like I guess they could do a full circle thing, right? Where at the beginning of Breath of the Wild, they said that there was some, you know, legendary hero 17,000 years ago or whatever. 10,000. Like, uh, yeah, 10,000. And, you know, he stopped. The, like, they could do like a full circle thing. Where it links I guess, the Skyward Sword or something like that. No, it's not. It's not even that. It's, yeah, kind of like with Link with Skyward Sword. Yeah, actually. So um, it, it which, like the the end of Tears of the Kingdom could be like the beginning. It's like of the Skyward beginning Sword. of Breath of the Wild. No, bro, I was thinking like, of eh. Skyward. So like the beginning of the timeline, the the game at the end of the timeline loops to the beginning of the timeline. I just it's not that a time travel opens up cans of worms. <laughs> I like the yeah, I like the theory. Of, I like the theory Zelda of everything and being time a legend. Travel? I know, but this is a new game. Let's. let's yeah, but this, every Zelda. It's a new link. Okay. <laughs> new link, new, new me. You're really <laughs> You're really <laughs> hating on time travel. Time travel it's, and Zelda are like hand in hand at this point. Yeah, this I know. And some, ga- and some games do it better than others. <laughs> 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 that's why I'm that's why I'm sitting there like, Fair oh enough. no, not not again. Sometimes this doesn't work out very well and I don't like it. I have another time travel theory later on. But it's actually at the very end of this trailer. <laughs> Um, okay but uh so a lot of people think that maybe a lot of people are assuming rather that this figure is the same as this figure that we saw earlier because i don't know it, dark it don't skin like it. and all that yeah i don't know the i don't see it i don't know but, Where, where's the weird pig face necklace thing yeah so like people think that uh that figure and looks like zant this guy are the same people. I think that these are probably separate instances of this Zonai or whatever person, this dark skin race of people. But I don't know. It way taller than Zelda. Zelda is like short. Yeah. All the all the Hylians are actually rather short. Hmm. Also, this figure probably has some pretty long hair. Is this that hair. I think so because um this figure has the same like white hair with these like gold ends happening right here this white hair with oh bits. okay I see, I see i see the white now yeah okay and it has a very similar stature to has a very similar oh. statue to this with long hair straight up demise dude <laughs> straight up demise but demise does have shorter hair than that demise has some pretty short hair and then there's like fiery hair this you can grow it out. But what if this isn't Ganondorf? What if this is this character? But to your point, you mentioned that this character doesn't look super trustworthy. Yeah. What if they turn evil uh, and then that's, uh, that's true. go demise kind of form? So this could be that same character that we saw earlier turning around. Maybe this is demise or something. Or maybe this is the good half of Ganondorf or something like that. Who knows? But this character does have similarities to that figure that we saw this, that demise like figure that we saw earlier. Yeah, I could see it and has some Zonai stuff around them. So maybe there is Zonai. There's a lot of potentials here. Maybe they're the same as that, like Triceratops looking character that I mentioned earlier. You know, <laughs> uh, yeah. Zelda is Zelda is also rocking some like Zonai stuff here. Uh, she has like the straight. Well, so these are we mentioned. I mentioned yeah. that this uh, looks like a lotus flower bud. This is probably like she has the same like lotus flower bud that we see throughout the trailer. And we see another character have these same earrings later. Yeah. Uh, Different dress. A lot of people think that they're the same character. Different dress. Zelda is wearing a different dress here, but same earrings. I guess you can throw my idea of like the traditional Zelda experience being handed to like Zelda underground, like out the window at this point. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) She seems more like a plot device again. We see... One of the like Zelda's Magatama or her tear on her necklace right here. Mm-hmm. And maybe another one on this character's hand. I maybe. don't know. Maybe. Looks quite big. Yeah. Unsure. Link looking cool. We saw this before. Yeah. This little flying thing that he's chilling on. 
this so, yeah my my brother also saw that and he's just when he saw that he's like i don't understand <laughs> <laughs> like so looking at it now it is a two-handed claymore so i yeah. can kind of understand like now that you have a shield with your claymore but like mm-hmm. it does look silly like how do you swipe with that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah the issue with the royal claymore with any of the claymores is that you're unable to use a shield but you could fuse a shield onto it to get the same effect. That is cool. It kind of defeats the purpose of the like maximum of damage, <laughs> no defense part of the Royal Claymore. But to be fair, this is a really expensive fusion. Is that you, yeah. you're wasting both a shield and a sword to make this a, one weapon. And a pretty good shield and sword at that. Yeah. I, I wonder if it's like, a, hey... You can put the shield and the sword, but we're going to tone down the damage because it doesn't make sense to swipe like that. <laughs> yeah, it makes <laughs> no sense. So that's just cool. Uh, See, there's that little thing. Yeah. You... Dropping through or, it to do p- some kind of puzzle. P- pachinko machine. Yeah, I don't know if this is the same one. This almost looks like it's full of water or something, like you have to swim through it, but that could just be the shadows. Yeah, it could just be the wall textures playing tricks on my eyes. Yeah. But cool to see that. This is cool. You see some like Goron trial or something like that. I'm pretty sure. Well, these are Goron in the background, but then this looks like a Goron. Maybe Yonobo or something kind of testing link. Ooh, he does this same Yonobo does this same attack in uh, Age of Calamity. Okay. This is like so, a ability of his. So this could be Yonobo. Or maybe it's some other like monster or something. It looks pretty Goron though. Like the hands right there. Yeah. I I, <laughs> I choose to believe it's it's Yonobo. Yeah. Gorons have this throughout Zelda have this habit of trying to test Link. Like even in like Twilight Princess, there's like mm-hmm. you have to do the um uh, like sumo wrestling match against the uh, oh Morons. yeah, and then there's also like the the was gut check rock or something in Breath of the Wild. Like they they play these games with Link sometimes, and this yeah. looks like maybe some kind of like game or trial that like Link has to complete. And there's even like other Gorons watching. So this doesn't look like a danger kind of situation. This looks like a test no. kind of situation. And you know, again story wise yeah i may have saved your entire race but link we have to test you again so yeah that's just interesting we see the i think this is like the cobble crusher or one of those weapons look, looks like it has a little bit of added something something at the tip though yeah it looks like it was fused with like a moblin horn or something and i'm yeah. pretty sure yeah yeah we've seen that on top of moblins before or the yeah yeah moblins or bacoblins or one of those yeah so it looks like that's like a fused weapon right there it's like a yeah. cobble crusher or one of those. There's like three different kinds of like Goron, basically the same weapon. Yeah. This part, which as long as we're showing off like Yonobo and all the future champions. Remember in Breath of the Wild when you were flying with um Teba mm-hmm. and his foot got injured? Yeah. This is Teba's son, uh, Tulin, in Breath of the Wild. Oh, uh, yeah. So maybe Teba is no longer able to be a future champion and instead it's Tulin. Okay. Because that's totally Tulin right there. That's not No, no, no. You're not wrong. Yeah. So that's cool. He's got some kind of like ancient Sheikah or ancient Zonai thing on his back. And he's carrying the same um the same uh same bow bow as his dad. Yeah. More and credit we... towards him taking the torch. And we see some of these like potentially ancient Rito ships over here, like in the background. It would make sense that like he's the champion for this part of the story where they're dealing with ancient Rito stuff. Mm-hmm. This is cool. Yeah, that's that seems f- fairly intricate. This looks like some kind of side quest or something where he yeah. needs to like pull like save these people or like transport them out of danger or just somewhere else. <laughs> Can I rocket them away if I find the material? <laughs> Everyone like, get on. Hold on tight. <laughs> yeah. Alternate use cases for the ultra hand is super cool to see. Yeah. <laughs> and then Link using the uh recall ability. 
This is super cool. Did, These did guys he, like, are annoying. Stop time. Yeah, I mentioned that earlier. When okay. you use the recall ability, time stops for a second, and then the so you path, can you can hit your thing. Okay. Yeah, the path that the object that you're recalling on, uh, has this little line here, and then goes to the this place, the state where it was before. Mm -hmm. And okay. that's cool because these Octoroks were super annoying in Breath of the Wild. <laughs> so any way to defeat them is appreciated. This see <laughs> see this is what I mean. Why it, like this is okay. He Nuts fuses, and bolts time. Yeah. Nuts and bolts time. There's there's rockets. He that you can it use. to his shield. You he you, you can bolts. put a rocket <laughs> onto those carts. Oh yeah. And then rocket the people instead of driving the horse or riding the horse. Like I really want to know if Nintendo's going to lean into that. Like, it's cool, but I think it like I'm not going to be very experimental with this, but I am looking forward to the online communities and what they're going to experiment with. I have already seen people on Reddit kind of like pointing out some of the weird potential things you could do, like just like stupid things like yeah. phallic shaped rockets or like <laughs> people's people making like armor just out of pot lids all over their body. <laughs> Just like ridiculous looking things on the uh, on the subreddits. It's it's pretty entertaining. But some people something that you mentioned that reminded me something that uh it was either Aonuma or like the lead designer or one of the designers or something of Tears of the Kingdom mentioned that some of the ideas that they're exploring in Tears of the Kingdom were born from some of the things that they saw that people were doing online with the game mechanics of Breath of the Wild. Oh and one of the things in Breath of the Wild that people kind of figured out that they could cheese a way to do, you couldn't use Magnesis on something that you were on, like on yeah. a mag mag magnetic thing you were on, because then that would be flying. But you can use Magnesis on something underneath something that you're on. And <laughs> to then fly system. that way. So people were like stacking <laughs> mine carts on top of mine carts and then using Magnesis on the mine cart underneath the mag minecart underneath them to fly throughout the like making these flying machines and the ultra hand ability is similar to that like you can kind of create these things in a legit way <laughs> instead of just like <laughs> screwing around with the mechanics yeah instead of breaking it which i'm sure yeah. this will be broken too oh yeah definitely there, there's <laughs> even more stuff you can do now <laughs> so yeah that's just it's just interesting seeing this like this is this a created thing like did link make this rocket or did I'm, is this just something that was found out sure. in the world he fused it with his shield if you did find it in the world who who made that yeah <laughs> the zonai looking thing so anyway straight up made a rocket that's that is just cool this is cool I love low there's gravity like, looking stuff. Yeah, there's like this anti gravity going on here, but I, I I'm confused as to what it's coming from. Is it just those rocks? I think because it's just he didn't, the rocks. He didn't jump from one of those rocks. He was just oh. like on a platform, but yet he's doing this anti gravity thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, there's also these like it, water bubbles that we've been that we I saw think, earlier. Yeah, I think we were. Yeah, I think that's where he was earlier. Hmm. And then he had like go around or something, and this is the next part of the puzzle. Yeah. And there's also the those like was that like slimy goop straight ahead in the middle of there on that like pillar? What is that? No, the down left right there. Oh, I don't know. What, what is that? We've been seeing those like weirdly rendered waterfalls. Maybe it's like some like kind water. of goop or something. Maybe they're like goop falls. <laughs> I do. it doesn't it doesn't look right <laughs> i don't know also we see one of those bell icons that we've been seeing around mm -hmm. right on these these little blocks and I, I just love like moon jumping kind of stuff low gravity stuff yeah it's fun oh uh, there's these fun sections that are definitely going to be part of like well, there's here, here's what it's going to be. There's going to be a part in a dungeon where you do this, and then mm -hmm. there's going to be a subsequent part where there's going to be some mini game challenges that the Gorons are going to make you do. Yeah, I, that's what I think. Just looks like a dungeon. 
it looks like, like a dungeon, but I, but I fully expect there to be like a, a mini game as well based on this. That the Gorons oh, will be like, oh, now that you've defeated this dungeon, we thought yeah. these carts are going to be really cool. Why don't you? Why don't we test you again, Link? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I can see that happening. This this is so, <laughs> so weird. This is my favorite part of the trailer by far. I love it. Oh man. Nintendo, you better give me a good story, otherwise I know what you were doing otherwise. <laughs> Neon Zelda Evangelion right here. <laughs> love this. I I just for no good reason. I love this so much. It's even it's even like fighting or like aiming something. Yeah. Like oh, like man. an arrow or something. I don't I don't even know. It's like a thunder sword or some cannon. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know. I love how just I'm, poorly built this is. I'm assuming you have some control over that too. Like, yeah, it's he's gonna he's, be... he's got a steering wheel right here. No, I see that, but like you could shoot and like, oh like, yeah, like I feel like they're gonna. It's oh, we're gonna have like spaceships and Zelda. Like how the arm is just waving <laughs> around. It's <laughs> so haphazardly. I I just love this so much. I can't wait to just build stupid contraptions in this game. <laughs> I swear to, I, I swear to god if you if if like the final boss is going to be like that one in Wind Waker where you're just standing on a top of a hilltop about to fight Ganon in, but you like approach Ganon and just some monstrosity like that. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> oh man. This is such a cool way. Oh, I mean like siege weapon against siege weapon. It's <laughs> so freaking cool. I love this so much. Anyways, this is not a whole lot to talk about, but this is my favorite part of the trailer. <laughs> It's like Link building Gundams. Like, man, the possibilities. Okay. Certainly more possibilities than Link's creative mind. I'm just going to make a tall <laughs> tower and have it walk in a straight line. Yeah. Waving the waving of a thunder rod. So this is kind of cool. Um, Horse armor. <laughs> Horse armor. That was already kind of in Breath of the Wild. But that's true. I was going to say Oblivion DLC is coming in. In Breath of the Wild, the item description for the rubies are that it contains the power of fire. So it's cool seeing him use the fuse ability on an arrow to make a fire arrow. Is the rupee actually on it? Uh, it looks like it, yeah. He fires it later. Uh, that's so weird. And this armor, or specifically this helmet, at first I thought that they were horns, but actually look more like the Oh, ears. it looks more like, yeah, because I even see the dangling, dangling bits. I think that this could be like uh, this helmet could be a reference Zonai. to this character. This like Zonai helmet. Anyways, that's yeah. just interesting. This whole armor actually like with these like triangle within triangles are similar also yeah, to the that, Zonai it looks, stuff. It, it looks like that other guy's the thing that, that talked to Zelda. It looks like his uh, outfit. Yeah, these. Yep. Yeah, definitely. So I think that this armor is actually has the same kind of poncho kind of thing as that other guy, too. So this armor is probably some kind of like ancient Zonai thing. And he fires it or this is a different part. He fires an arrow at a Bacoblin encampment. It's like that. It's it's a created thing. I think you can activate any of them by just hitting them. And yeah, I guess like game total, des demo. total, total destruction, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Also, we see um, this Bacoblin here with kind of like a backpack. Yeah. And we see the same design for a backpack with these like three little horns. The official trailer number two with this Bacoblin that's mining right here. Mm hmm. Just kind of like an interesting callback, like the same three little horn backpack. It'll be it'll probably be easy to collect items if you just scout out those guys. Yeah, probably. There's something important, something glowing in there that probably has some kind of plot significance. Or a bunch of yellow choo-choo jellies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then here uh, we have... There's, there's, there's some of the cool bosses. Lincoln's um, Tulin fighting this, like, bug. Ginormous centipede thing. Yeah, this, like, Tempest bug with multiple eyes. This is freaky. Love it. Oh. Like it, that's see, that's much closer to like a proper Zelda like boss. Yeah, this looks like something out of Skyward Sword. I yeah, love it does. This so it does much. actually. I can't wait for this game. This looks like a cutscene, but I'm pretty sure this guy is going to be f like fightable alongside yeah. Tulin in some kind of way. 
So cool. Zelda. What was... It's obviously Malice. Is, is, is like Gandorf's throwing the mouse in the air what, what was that initial scene i think that this is a clever oh. cut this is like ganondorf or like otherwise this figure launching old, something in the air old like ganon oh it is that is this definitely is a like a yeah that is definitely some movie magic i happening. would yeah i would not have noticed that otherwise that this now, is or maybe that's why I, us. yeah that maybe that's why i found it so jarring like this like well wait a minute this looks like the princess Mononoke like thing that comes out of this figure that takes over the pig that takes over Link's arm. That looks like what this is. This is something different. I think this is possibly the great upheaval. Mm-hmm. And then all these monsters coming back. And then that's this is the thing from the first shot. Okay. Princess Mononoke. And then Ganondorf ah, arises. Look at that a Lincoln beard, man. Oh yeah. Oh man. This 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 is what I mean. Like they they just combined a bunch of different versions of Ganon and like including the uh uh Hyrule Warriors Ganon, the one that like looks like a big lion. Yeah. At this point he says, Don't look away. You are witnessing a king's revival or something like that. This is the king of the Gerudo coming back. Ganondorf. Not Ganon. Ganondorf coming back. I wonder if this game like will really embrace that like he he called like he's the Gerudo King aspect of it. I wonder yeah. what the Gerudos are going to think. We see this like glowing thing on his head that looks a lot like I don't know if the compression is going to help you but like this looks like one of the tears mm-hmm. on his head, which is interesting. Like he has one of the tears on his forehead and then later I'll show the official art that shows him having a tear in his head. So he has one of the tears. He has one of the Magamatas like on his head. Also like a little ponytail or something going on. Yeah, he's 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 very stylish. Very stylish desert man in this one. Yeah. And then this creature. I, it looks like something from Splatoon, I'll be honest. Oh, interesting. Like Splatoon. Yeah, just the color and like the goopiness. So they look similar to the Moldugas from Breath of the Wild, Mm -hmm. but I think more likely they're, I think, I don't know how to pronounce these things, Georgs from uh, previous Zelda games. In Majora's Mask, the Georg was one of the, like, four main bosses. Oh, okay. But in Wind Waker, they were just kind of common enemies that you find throughout the world. Yeah. Yeah. It was the same name. One's a boss, but then they got demoted later in the franchise. But like (laughs) it, this looks like a Georg is if I had to guess, except instead of water, it's like using this like black sludge to go through the ground. It might be similar to the black sludge I pointed out earlier that was coming out of that. Um, In fact, maybe that's where this guy is. Maybe. Well, there's some more black sludge later in the trailer. Okay. Anyways. Tulin and Link. Who it's, is this? I don't. What? I don't know. She has Zelda's. Okay, one. I, I know to how... that there's a lot of comparisons between like some of the features that she has in Zelda. I don't know if mm-hmm. the ears are quite there. She has like, she has like really big ears. I don't um, think this is Zelda. No. To be clear, I I know, but some people are like comparing it. They're like, oh, look at the hair, look at the eyes, look at all those other things, and I'm just uh, she has a tear, and I'm like, I don't know, mm. man. It could just be another princess. Yeah, it could be like <laughs> it's the... probably just another princess of the zone eyes or something. <laughs> yeah, this could be like an ancient reincarnation of like before the Hylians, the zone eye. This is like a Zelda in the past or something, but she's like a zone eye or something. She's like the dark skinned race. Yeah. And she's is using like the same power and stuff like that. The Triforce power that Zelda has. But she also has the same earrings that Zelda mm-hmm. did in, in this trailer and the same tier on her neck just like zelda had earlier too yeah like this is a necklace made from this tier and that i don't think that she's wearing the same dress as zelda like i don't think that this is a lot of people think that this is zelda's like powered up form or something i don't think so she's wearing a different dress and everything yeah 
but this is like some kind of ancient person. I don't know. It's interesting. The Triceratops race or something. Because why does she look so highly in? But like they showed off the other like people. I don't know. That's why I was thinking maybe maybe that other one, the first one we saw, I was like, is that like a mask or something? Because this I knew that this person existed. And I'm like, I didn't know. That's why I thought the other what we thought was what we think is Zonai. It, it's like a mask because I knew that this person existed. And I'm like, is this person Zonai? I think I think that this person is Zonai. I think that all three of the dark skinned people that we see throughout this trailer are different individual people. I don't think that that's a mask that we saw earlier. It looks too realistic. I think that it's a person's face. But mm-hmm. I think that this is just another one of the same race. Or maybe like a mix. Like maybe they're half Zonai, half Hylian or something. Or something along those lines. This could be like a Zelda of the past. That was because the royal name, Zelda's name, their children, Zelda. So this yeah. could be a Zelda that they like interbred with the with the Zonai or something. There's so many possibilities about this character. She could be half Zonai, half Hylian. She has the same like powers that like Zelda does, the Triforce of Wisdom powers that Zelda uses in Breath of the Wild. And then she has like the recall ability necklace that Zelda has. So there's a lot of similarities. This could be like an ancestor or something. There's watch so many characters. Aliens. <laughs> Maybe. Watch, watch it all be aliens. So this could be, I don't know, this is something to do with the Zonai or the dark skin race people, probably. But her skin is lighter than them, although that could just be the lighting. I There's a lot of possibilities. Know. Who knows? Um, and then this is weird that this is the brand new character. And then we this is the only like split second shot that we get of her. You get like 0. 0.7 of a second. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, it's cool. This is maybe her doing this attack. On these Moldugas? Jeez. Unsure? Just demo- whatever is causing this attack is powerful. <laughs> yeah. And we saw Jeez. this this charge of Moldugas in a previous trailer too. I think I yeah. pointed it out. And then this is... Uh, this is probably how it ended up. <laughs> yeah, this is the demolishing of them. Riju. Mm-hmm. She looks... This is something that I was mentioning earlier that this she does could look be, slightly older. Yeah, maybe a year or so in the future. Like she looks older. Also, she has um, Urbosa's scimitar of the seven, but she has two of them. Maybe another one was forged or maybe she got one from the past or something like that. Like like Thor, like with the other Milner, like she has two of them and that's her gimmick. Her using uh, Urbosa's ability. So mm-hmm. maybe instead of having the champ like link having the champion abilities the canon reason for why he's starting from scratch and he doesn't have those abilities anymore is because he gave gave them up yeah he gave them to the new champions that would be kind of cool so she has oprah's urbosa's fury look at you trying to make your own little army yeah this little militia here like with the flag guy in the middle is is straight up (laughs) cross-eyed (laughs) <laughs> also his little bucket this is why do, why do the hylians get done dirty everybody else looks like they're ready to fight but the hylians are yeah. just like <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny i mean yeah there is like a gerudo here like a proper warrior <laughs> yeah these guys this goron Jeez. here also this sword is new it's like zonai looking sword oh, it looks like the levin sword it does look like the levin sword from fire emblem yeah that's pretty cool this oh is... that's so fun it like they're actually helping you yeah <laughs> so breath of the wild i feel like had the idea behind a companion system there is the wolf link amiibo yeah that you can scan in and literally is a companion following you around fighting stuff alongside you yeah but it was i think only... it even has a health bar doesn't it yeah yeah it has health and everything and that whole mechanic was locked behind an amiibo, which made me feel like maybe that's a lot of work for an amiibo. Yeah, maybe it was programmed in, but not fully functioning. So only some people got to use it. And it's OK if it's a little broken because only like 10, 20 percent of the people of who play Breath of the Wild are going to be able to use it. Maybe even like 5 percent. So if it's a little broken, then whatever. But this is maybe it's been expanded upon. And now you actually get 
people that are fighting alongside you. That would be really cool. This looks like some kind of story segment with, I mentioned that black goo kind of spewing out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's coming from some central location. This looks like Zoro's domain. This is like an island above Zoro's domain. This looks like the fin of like a little of like the, you know what I mean? Yeah, I can kind of see it. There's like a Korok um, up here. Yeah, yeah, I, I see. I it it looks like a fin. Yeah, like, like back fin. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. So okay, that's just interesting. This looks like maybe it makes sense if this was on top of Zora's domain and Link is helping the Sky Islands above Zora's domain with Sidon along there because of course he would be there. I hope it's not just relegated to a story segment. But hopefully, it's like a hey, every now and again you get to like bring somebody along with you on an adventure to a certain point that'd be cool although this does happen before another cutscene that we see the well Mm -hmm. well, one this is gameplay not a cutscene clearly but two things about Sidon here are different he's not wearing something on his head that i'll point out later and also in a future shot he has a tear of like a blue glow glowing tear. Okay. So this happens before certain parts of the story. That's super cool. This part right here. He has a tear. Okay. And Riju and he's there's... wearing a crown. She's she's wearing a crown. Well, she was already wearing a crown. Sidon doesn't wear a crown. And this crown is the same as Dora Fan's. Mm-hmm. What happened to Dora Fan? to where Sidon is now wearing a crown is uh, I mean the dark the dark answer is he got he got got uh, yeah <laughs> the and not so dark answer is he just passed it on it He's just could, like yeah, you're king you're king now it could be I would love to see Sidon's coronation in the story mm-hmm. his coronation of like him receiving the crown becoming the king and also receiving the tear mm-hmm Riju also ha- has a tear on her like earring or something in a future shot. So this is like all of the future like guardians or not guardians. Um people like I want- wielding their like become like wielding their tears at full power or something. Yeah. And then in- you you just see the little Goron weapon show up at the bottom right too. So yeah. I think Daru Tulin's right here. Not- yeah. It's Yonobo. Tulin has a Tulin has a tear. The wind's yeah. tear. Oh, okay. So we never see Yonobo. We don't, but you I feel like that's him right there. Like, well, we might have seen Yonobo. We just can't confirm it. Because it was that one guy zooming by Link Z- during like the little test thing. It could have been yeah. Yonobo. I think it's Yonobo. That also could be Yonobo. Um, we just don't see him running. Maybe they didn't want to show too much because maybe there was something else there during that shot that they didn't want to see. We to see. we did get official artwork of the three current champions. We have art of Tulin. We have art of Sidon and art of Riju, but they never released one of Yonobo. Could be that they're trying to hide some parts of the story. And that Yonobo is not in this game. This could be a different Goron. Maybe. Because there's something going on with Death Mountain. Oh, that would be that would suck if Yonobo yeah. didn't make it. Yeah. There's already some of that happening with Tulin becoming the the next generation of champion. So maybe something happened to Yonobo and they're really trying to hide the Goron champion. They yeah. released no art of him. They showed all of the others in this trailer. And this is the only remnant of a Goron champion we see so far at all mm-hmm. is this weapon here. So it's just it's interesting, the possibilities. And uh, we see Gleok. Oh, with such a badass weapon that that Link has. Did you take a gander at that? This bow? No, no, no. Whoa! <laughs> I was going to say, how did you not notice that? Whoa! <laughs> uh, That's I cool. saw that like as he was running, I just saw the tip, and I'm like, whoa, what the heck is that? Oh, man. That's so cool. <laughs> it looks like a wing. 
it looks like a crystallized like wing or something or like something that is uh dropped from the dragons yeah so like oh, maybe like a, like a like a scale yeah like maybe he like fused a sword with a scale or something or like a feather mm-hmm. or maybe this is its own weapon super cool love this so much and gliok this like flaming gliok here it it's straight up just it reminds me of just hercules just looking at it oh interesting yeah oh man zelda with the master sword a continuation of that carving that we've been seeing bits and pieces of with now that we know that Ganondorf is in this game Ganondorf right here yeah this is the Ganondorf part that's cool this is like so these are like moblins and bacoblins and stuff like that this is like a humanoid maybe this is meant to represent Astor from Age of Calamity if I had to guess like Ganondorf's like main disciple that's possibly what that is astor i don't i feel like they're trying to not include age of calamity because that was somewhat co-made alongside a a different studio and that different studio obviously made astor themselves in the collaboration game so that way they couldn't use him later so if they wanted to use those characters later then they would have to pay them so like it you know they're probably trying to beat around the bush but this could be a reference to astor like, it, it, it is Ganondorf on the right. It's clearly Ganondorf. Yeah, the beard and everything. Yeah. Or Demise, or like an ancient version of Ganondorf or something. The post-credits of the uh, trailer. The, Mar- the Marvel post-credits. Zelda saying, Link, you have to find me, or something like that. Yeah, again. So, Ugh. this makes me <laughs> think time travel, because a few things. One... A lot of people pointed out, I saw on uh, on Reddit, this image from Reddit. Oh. People are like, guys, I found Zelda. <laughs> 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 they are like comparing some of the like parts like that's this cliff right here in Breath of the Wild, like right here. This like, like people pinpointed exactly where she is. She's at the, is she at the Great Plateau or no? The Great no, Plateau she's, is like a little bit more left. Yeah, she's hovering over like Lake Hylia or something like that. Okay, I just love the like. I found Zelda, guys. <laughs> the game's and not even nothing, out yet. And there's nothing in the sky with her. Yeah, no, she's closer to the ground. No, I mean, like, yeah, like there's no floating sky islands. No. So yeah. that makes me, the fact that like her physical location is so pinpointable, and like in theory, you could just go there and find her accidentally. This isn't a link you have to find to be physical location. I think this is a link you have to find to be through time. That's what that's my best guess. I mean, sure. If if they do a time thing, then I then I can see like Link's action in the present. You can go into the either the future or you can go back to the past and like change outcomes and like see the see what you did in the future in order to make a town or something. I don't know. I'll, have, I'll, I'll, I'll to be honest, I'll just have to play the game to see how I would feel if they're going to go that route. If they just please do it right or just just don't make me upset. <laughs> so i i would say at least with this trailer generally speaking story wise i i'm pretty sati- satiated uh mm-hmm. i think gameplay in the last trailer i'm glad they chose to show us the gameplay before the story bits of course they're going to show the story bits right before the game comes out yeah um and like they're leaving me just enough questions and also like giving me the characters that i want to see i really wanted to see that uh, gandorf return uh, it was underwhelming in Breath of the Wild to not have like a real big baddie like villain to actually talk to. Instead, you just had more of a force of nature, which is cool as a boss, but I don't think it makes for a very appealing like final boss. Mm-hmm. So this is the end of the trailer, but there are a few other details that appear throughout like the Zelda website and on Twitter and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. As per the usual at this point. The Zelda website I mentioned uh, has this tidbit. Link begins his journey on one of the Sky Islands. Mm -hmm. And throughout Zelda Twitter, they release these official, like, version two of the official artworks. These, like, battle poses. The prince of the Zora tribe. So he's still referred to as a prince at this point. He doesn't have the crown either. I think that might have been a slip in the trailer that they showed him wearing the crown. (laughs) Um, 
the prince of the Zora tribe, bright and full of justice, an honest and passionate man who thinks of the people more than anything else, and who throws himself away when Zora's domain is in danger. And this is Tulin, a boy from the Rito tribe who soars in the sky with the wings of with the wings on his arms, specializing in handling bows and arrows, just like his is dad. It, is it Tulin or Churi? What's Churi there? I think this is um this is, is just like a translation. Japanese? Yeah, just like how Sid is Sidon. Oh, okay. In Japan, yeah, Churi okay. is his name in in Japanese, and uh, we Aww, don't yeah. we don't get one for um, for uh, Riju, but then there was this compilation photo thrown together by I think that's a Nintendo Black Crisis. This is like all of the artwork, so I don't know where these came from. Probably like a Zelda newsletter or something like that, but like these um, artwork of this artwork of Riju. In any event, uh, we don't get a Twitter post, at least for Riju. We do get one for Ganondorf. And this is the first artwork of Ganondorf we get. We get a second artwork later. He has the tear on his head. A red tear, which could be taken from the Gorons. Uh, Yeah, he has been known to torture the Gorons specifically. And like... The wind tier, like two winds tier, is green, which represents wind usually. Obviously, blue for water, and then um, it's like a yellowish green for Riju. The fire one obviously would be red, and he mm-hmm. has a red tier on his forehead. Okay, is just an an interesting note. And then his second artwork, though, super cool. I love like the samurai sword and stuff, but he has a gray tier or a silver tier on his head. That is a different tier. So where did he get this one? Hmm. It it just doesn't look good for the for the Gorons right now. No, and and the description that they have for Gan for Ganondorf on the Twitter it seems so like so, so vague. He is born as a man who is only born once every hundred years in the Gerudo tribe, which is dominated by women. It seems to have something to do with the natural disaster that struck Hyrule, the Great Upheaval. Like, and then this <sighs> this artwork was only given to press in like Zelda Europe. I think this is like French or something like that. So this isn't even like on Twitter or anything. This is like someone reposted this, but this is like a press image that was sent out to Europeans. Yep. Why big, only big, Europeans? I don't know. <laughs> but Big Daddy Ganondorf. <laughs> big Daddy Big absolute, Daddy Dorf. Absolute absolute unit of a man for this one. I like the the samurai sword. I can't wait for this boss fight. Now that we've recovered and had ourselves a little chat, what did you think? Leave us a comment on YouTube and like the episode. That really helps us out. We're also on Twitter and Instagram at the Low HP Podcast if you want to reach out there. And subscribe if you want to catch more of us on YouTube. We're also on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Links in the show notes as always.